Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Bite Size in Fall. I'm happy to have with me today um, Marcel. He's um, from Zikera Labs and is telling us today how to set up a Gitpod environment, which might be specifically of interest for people who will join the training tomorrow. So off to you. Hello, everyone. It's great to be here again. So Gitpod is a very nice uh, product or service, and we've been using it to help people have some hands-on as fast as possible access to, to, to the training material that we have in Nextflow. Some people, they, they have some difficulties. They, they, they try to look for up-to-date material on how to use Gitpod or how to use Gitpod to access our trainings, the Nextflow community trainings. So we decided to, to provide this bite-sized talk so that people can have an up-to-date uh, video tutorial on how to do it and also to give some more to get more into to get into more details about how Gitpod works, which is something that we don't do during the training because that's not really the focus. So I'm going to share my screen <clears throat> and show a bit Gitpod. So that's the official website, it's gitpod.io. The best way is not the training material, but here to 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 find more details about the pricing and everything else because it has changed reasonably often in, in recent months and years. Uh, so even though in the training, we try to have the most up-to-date information about how it works, ideally you should come here and check how it, how it works, okay? Because sometimes uh, even the, the, the measurement of the hours that you use, they, they are different. So the first thing to do is to, to sign up. So I'm, I already have an account. So what I did was to, to take some print screens of the process. So when you go and you click on sign up or sign in, you're going to see the screen, which means you 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 don't really create an account for Gitpod, but you use another account that you already have. In the past, you could only log in with GitHub, but now you can also log in with Bitbucket and GitLab. So once you, cho you choose one of these options, you're gonna see a window similar to this one. This one's for GitHub, asking you to authorize Gitpod to access your account and so on. Once you click to authorize that, you will get this window asking, okay, so it was out, it was out, you authorized that, so it's synced your GitHub account or Bitbucket account or anything like this uh, with Gitpod. You're gonna choose a name. And this is the a thing that's relatively recent. So you can connect your LinkedIn account, account with your Gitpod account, and then you get 50 hours of usage per month. If you don't do that, you only get 10 hours per month. It's a bit annoying, but this is more than enough, the 10 hours is more than enough to, to form the training, the, the foundational training. If you want to still use Gitpod up and afterwards, then it may not be enough and you may have to pay or to connect your LinkedIn account to get the 50 hours per month. But it's not only that. When you are opening, uh, when you are configuring the, the version of the VS Code, because in the end, Gitpod is going to provide you a VS Code web version in your browser. So here you can pick what's the default version you do want, that you want, the theme, and then it's going to ask also uh, some information about you, where you work at and what you're using Gitpod for and so on. And in the end, you get the screen which has all these workspaces. So what are workspaces? So what Gitpod provides to you in the end is not only like this, web viewer or, or VS Code, but also a virtual machine, right? And you point to to Git repository URLs, like GitHub repositories, that have some uh, Gitpod virtual machine prepared for that. Then when you access that, you have one workspace. Now you may have multiple workspaces for the same repository. So they are all gonna appear here. And the thing is, when you decide to, to open one of them, uh, and I'm going to and I'm going to show here uh, one example. So we can go to GitHub, next low, show you next oops, train. So when you go to the repository and we know that the train material they, we have a git pod for that, you just get the URL and you add gitpod.io slash hashtag and the address of the GitHub repository. And then you're gonna have this new workspace window. The detail here that I want to, to emphasize for you is that here you have some options of what machines you want to use to, to, 
to, to, to run this container image that we built for the training material. We have the standard one and the large one. All of those 10 hours or 50 hours that we saw a while ago, a few minutes ago, you're actually the standard machine, which means that if you choose the large machine, which has more memory, more storage, and more CPU cores, it's going to be less than 10 hours and less than 50 hours if you connect your LinkedIn account. So it's much better first to use this large machine, but be aware that the time is gonna be shorter than 10 or 50 hours. I usually use the standard one and it's pretty fine. So you're gonna click, click continue and then you're gonna see this uh, screen loading and building the, the, the workspace for you, okay? Preparing, starting. Uh, the first time you do that, it's gonna take a bit longer. It's pulling the container image. It's going to install some software. It's going to do a few things. And in the end, it's going to provide to you this window. It takes a while for everything to finish because there's more that we want to, to show to you. Okay, so that's that's ready now. You can close the debug console here, click in here, and you have access to your terminal, which, which shows everything you see on the left. Right? We are in the NF training folder. This is the folder for the hands-on training, which is another training in the this platform. We have it here, hands-on training. You're gonna just compress it here. This is the folder for the foundational training. This one here, the, the basic next level training workshop. And you can we can see here with the LLS here indeed inside this folder here. So once we are inside, then there's all these features that if you already use uh, VS Code, it's, it's all the same. We have the file explorer here. You can click on any of these files to open them. You can close them with this X at the top. If you want to download some file, you can click with the red button or depending how you configure in your machine. And you have the option here to download the file. And it's going to download the file to your computer, right? Uh, you can rename files, you can delete files, you can copy path, you can do lots of things, but all these features are pretty similar to what you have in VS Code, just like these other ones here, right? So we have uh, this container image that is already pulled, which is will be used during the training material for the RNAC pipeline. We can open a browser here, extensions, some are already installed, you can decide to install others. We have some search control, Anyway, it's VS Code, right? Uh, you can create folders, files. There are many things. We could spend the whole day here showing you how this VS Code works. Uh, if you want to create a new file, I mean, everything you can do by this last panel here with the red button and so on, but you can also use the terminal. So if I want to create a new file name example.nf, I can type code example.nf, and it will open a new window here for you to type something. You can just save that, and it will appear here, appear, appear here example.nf. Just like you would do in your machine, typing code, right, for VS Code. So once you do that, you have access to all this uh, amazing environment. It's, it's not your machine. So maybe I don't have Nextflow installed in my laptop, but here I have Nextflow. Right? Maybe I don't have Docker installed in my machine, but here I have Docker, right? So everything is already installed here so that when you're following the training material, which is here, right? When you're following this training material, even if you don't know how to install or maybe you cannot install software in your machine for some reason, or you don't want to mess the configuration of your computer, you don't have to do anything in your computer. You just go to, to the Gitpod uh, workspace, this virtual machine, and do everything there because everything is already installed. So for example, in, this, in the sample and sake workflow that we're going to, to build at some point in the train, you can just run Nextflow, run script one that I have. You don't have that in your machine yet, but it's here, right? So I can just do Nextflow run script one not an F, and it's going to work. It's going to do whatever it's saying here, showing some, like printing the, the reads back, right? Right. So Gitpod allow us to very quickly start practicing Nextflow 
and to very quickly be able to follow the training material that we have with the recordings and everything that uh, you will soon uh, see. Mm, another interesting thing is to set up your GitHub instance for your personal GitHub repository. So the focus of today is really to show how to use GitPod for the training material GitHub repository, but it's also interesting to show you what's going on in the background. So the first thing is that we have a container image that we created. You can, here's the uh, training GitHub repository. So we can go to dot GitHub and we have this GitPod Docker file. So this is just the Docker file we use with the GitHub action to build uh, this container image. It installs lots of software that are required for the training material, uh, including uh, Conda and Mamba and Nextflow and NF portals and, and a few things, right? There's some configuration. This is the GitHub, the, the container image. If we do it locally in your machine and push to a container registry, but we have a GitHub action doing that. The interesting thing though, is a .gitpod.yml file at the root of your GitHub repository. And here is where you have all the magic happening. So you have some workspace location, some information about you, what you want your VS Code to look like and to have and so on. Uh, the checkout location in the virtual machine, right? Within a container, of course, you have some interesting thing here. So enable for the master default branch, enable for all branch in this repository. So maybe you want to open this GitHub repository with Gitpod, but you want a specific branch, right? No, you don't want master or main. We have a lot of things here. Then you have the container image where you will be inside when you open the Gitpod workspace. So here we have the, the container image that I just showed the Docker file to you, right? I have a few things, a few tasks, and here's some, some VS Code extension that we want by default, right? So this dot git pod YAML is where most of the magic happens. But then we also have that other file that we mentioned at the top of the previous file, which is git pod dash ws dot code dash workspace. So here, for example, I show what folders I want to be automatically opened in the file explorer on the left, as we saw a few minutes ago. And then a few settings also. All that you can find in the git pod web website. You have the resources and docs and so on. So everything you can find here, if you want to have a GitPod instance for your GitHub repository, right? When you do the gitpod.io slash hashtag and the GitHub URL, GitPod will look for these files, mostly for the .gitpod.yml that we saw here. And the other ones that it prefers, like this GitPod and so on. So I don't know if there's much more in that to talk about it. It's very, uh, it's it's simple, but I agree that without a video tutorial like we did here, it can be uh, maybe challenging to start using pod all of, all of a sudden when you want to do the next full training. But we believe that with this bite-sized talk, we can have some step-by-step -step video training like I showed with the, with the print screens of every screen you have when you sign up. Indeed, we have this connect with uh, detail now. It wasn't like this in the past. So some people were trying to follow our courses or training materials and they were like, oh, there's something different here. Why do I have connect my LinkedIn account and so on? So I believe that right now, if you try to connect your LinkedIn, maybe it will ask for a phone number to confirm. I'm not sure. Someone told me that, but I already have an account. So, so I can't really be sure. And I couldn't connect with my LinkedIn again. So, yeah, I think that's it. So if you have any questions I can answer or maybe focus on something specific that at first didn't seem, seem so important to me, but maybe for you, you want to know something else about this Git pod or training material and so on. So back to you, friends, to, to, to manage these questions. Thank you very much. So um, are there any questions from the audience? Maybe I can start with one question from my side first. So there seems to be quite a few files that you have to create in order to get this um, to work. Is there any easy way where there's like a builder or something that you just have or a, a wizard that guides you through creating one? Do you know about that? Yeah, so these files are really, if you want to create a Gitpod 
workspace for your personal project, right? For okay. the training material, everything is done already. Yes. So they have a command line called GP and they have a command, I think it's GP build or something that you run it and it builds the dot git pod that YAML for you. So in the git pod, you go to resources and docs and there are multiple files explaining how to do that. How to uh, to build this you know, file, how to test the other ones, how to install extensions, it, it's all there. And it's very useful if you want to maybe have a, a workspace to play with your next little pipeline, for example, that you are developing. But I want to emphasize that for the workspaces that are already there, like the training material, you don't have to do anything. The only thing you have to do is to sign up for an account and go to the URL gitpod.io slash hashtag and the GitHub repository URL of the training material. That's all you have to do. And then the signing up, of course, and, and waiting for it to load with the page and the builder and so on. Yeah. We have a question in the chat. Um, Cohen is asking, what is the main advantage over VS Code plus .dev container? Yeah, that's a hard question, actually, because until a while ago, the obvious difference is that VS Code, the code, GitHub code space, they were more expensive, right? So, oh no, sorry, I'm confusing VS Code and with the code spaces with GitHub. Mm, that's, that's a good question. So I'm I'm not sure if it, if I remember correctly. I use uh, the containers, but I think I also use it with code spaces. The thing is, until a while ago, Git Pod was better than the other solution because it was cheaper. Everyone was more limited, less powerful machines, and more expensive than Gitpod. But then recently, things started to change. So with GitHub code spaces, for example, they made it, I think, as cheap or maybe cheaper because they, I think they also provide maybe 55 or 60 hours. I remember when they released the, last, the latest change, it was something like, we give you for free the same amount of Gitpod or maybe even a bit more. So this was like a killing blow almost, I don't know. Get part still there, of course, and we love it and we use it, but it was a very, like, mm, I don't know how to say, it was a, a very strategic move from GitHub because now maybe a lot of people will use, will use, will use GitHub code spaces, people that before used GitPod. Okay. And we Just even summarize. have a GitHub. Sorry. Yeah, we even have some Git, GitHub code spaces for, I think, an NF core documentation, if I'm not mistaken. But we stay with Gitpod because we already have everything working. It's easy, and the amount of hours they provide to us is 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 uh is enough for the training material. So I can't say it's the best, but it's been working pretty good for us. Okay, to come back to the question, there may not be an advantage, but it's working pretty well yeah. for our purposes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Phil is also <laughs> um giving some <laughs> some comments. Uh, by the way, anyone could also unmute themselves, so you don't have to write that long. <laughs> um, so he says that all end of core pipelines ship with configs and containers, and it's part of the template. So no need to create them for those repos. But repos without configs will just work. It's only if you want to have fancy stuff with the configs. And he also says that dev containers is code spaces, but can also run locally. And he is not quite. Sure. <laughs> so if uh, Cohen yeah. could confirm that. <laughs> but uh, one thing yeah, is, so. Linux is Linux. So if you're on a Mac, it can help. And uh, Gitpod is totally disposable. Yeah, this is something that I do a lot, actually. So, for example, I, I, use, I have a MacBook, right? So I'm, I'm an Apple Silicon uh, architecture here. And sometimes when I want to run some pipelines, some things, they, they go high wire because the container, the tools used uh, are containers for Linux and I have Mac OS, which means that my Docker is actually running a virtual machine with Linux and inside running my container. And my operating system is emulating all these Intel uh, instructions to the Apple Silicon architecture. So it's a lot of emulation. So using Docker on Mac, if you use Mac OS, you know, using Docker on Mac OS is not really straightforward in the sense that things don't work as expected for no apparent reason. Sometimes it gets stuck, sometimes it gets longer, sometimes you have weird error. So whenever I'm developing pipelines with Linux containers and so on, or I want to test something, I go to Gitpod. 
because I get very weird mistakes on macOS. So just like you said, it's a great place if you want to, to have a Linux box, a Linux machine to play with and to run a pipeline to configure something, go to Git Pod. It's very, very nice. And it's disposable, right? When you're done, you just close the workspace and, and that's it. And one thing that Simon Pierce also replied in the chat, and I think it's very important to, to emphasize, is that Git Pod is entirely web-based. So the same way you don't have to, to, to have Next Tool installed or Docker, you don't have to have VS Code installed either. You can have just this very, you just bought this machine, nothing is installed, just the web browser. This is enough. You just open Git Pod and everything will be there for you. Yeah, we just got also the confirmation that dev container is uh, locally or that it's at least possible. Um, okay, great. Do we have any other questions from the audience? It seems everything is clear. Then I would like to thank you myself for this nice talk. And as usual, I also would like to uh, thank the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our talks and um, for the audience to uh, listen and for this nice discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye.